and officers are on high alert, making sure your ghosts and goblins get home safely. Today's high 89. It's our warmest Halloween in Jackson since 1912. That's a long time. Here's your trick or treating or trick or treat and trunk. All that stuff that's going on. A lot of activities, festivals only fall into the upper 60s by 9 o'clock. Boy, it's hard to believe November starts tomorrow, isn't it? Sure is, David. Well, one week from Election Day, and some people say they don't want to vote for either of the major party candidates. I'm Megan West. And I'm Keegan Fox. New tonight, 16 WAPT's Ross Adams went to find out what happens if you try to write in a candidate here in Mississippi. Ross. For some time now, in fact, the, at the bottom of the ballot, you can see a line for uh, someone who wants to write in a candidate. But here's the catch. That write-in vote may not count. The option has been on the ballot for years. There's one space on the ballot to write in any candidate you choose. They can choose to write in, but it will not be counted in Mississippi. Election leaders in Mississippi say that vote comes with a condition. I have someone that had wrote in one time Donald Duck. I mean, you know, they're so frustrated with the system. They don't want anybody. And you can write it in. It's just that it does not count. What if Donald Duck got more votes than the other candidates? then we would know that the people here were very unhappy with the two candidates. We found out the only time a write-in will work is if one of the candidates on the ballot dies or drops out at the last minute. If they want to do a write-in, they don't like any of the above, but it still means if they choose to do a write-in, whoever they write in will not be counted. So it's basically just a protest vote? Yes, it's a protest vote. Election commissioners are urging voters not to use that write-in space to record the name of the person they just voted for on the ballot. They say it could be confusing to poll workers and make it tougher and even longer, take longer time to count ballots on election night. For now, we're live at the Hines County Courthouse. Ross Adams, 16 WAPT News. Okay, Ross, thanks. Police are on an all-out manhunt tonight to find the gunman who opened fire in the middle of a crowded block party. You can see the reckless gunfire in this video. That shooter hit six people in the crowd late Friday night. It all happened in the middle of the Omega Sci-Fi homecoming block party. JPD says this video is vital evidence, but they need more help in the case. Well, one reason we released this video is it's good footage um, that we have a suspect shooting a, a, a handgun, but we also need the public's help in identifying the suspect. We're confident that the video shows the suspect, but if we have the community's help, then it will, it will be great. Investigators say they do have an idea of who the suspect in this video is, but they do need witnesses to come forward. If you have information that can help police, you can get reward money for it. Call Crime Stoppers at 601-355-TIPS. A federal judge pushed back sentencing for Christopher Epps. He'll now sentence the former prison head May 24th. Epps pled guilty to charges of money laundering and filing false tax returns in connection with the prison bribery investigation. He faces 23 years in prison and must forfeit almost $2 million in assets. The Jackson Police Department is giving families a safe place to celebrate Halloween. Right now, officers are holding their annual trunk or treat at the Police Training Academy until 8 o'clock. There are prizes, a costume contest, and, of course, candy. But there will be kids out on the streets tonight. 16 WAPT Scott Simmons shows us what officers are doing right now to keep them safe. Jackson Police says it will have officers out on the streets watching over trick-or-treaters, but they cannot be everywhere. They need your help. We want the main focus to be safety. Um, so some tips we want trick-or-treaters to know is make sure you trick-or-treat in an area that's familiar to you. Um, don't go to houses that's not well lit, and once you get there, don't go inside of a house. Also make sure the kids have reflective tape on their costumes or goodie bags and flashlights. Law enforcement agencies around the area will have more officers out for Halloween, but here in Clinton, they're actually launching a four-person traffic unit on this very night. And foremost is to slow the people down in our community and make the city of Clinton our roadways safe. That four-person unit, according to the chief, will focus on traffic issues, wrecks, and tickets so other officers can focus on other aspects of law enforcement. But the focus Monday evening is Halloween. Like tonight, where you have so many 
kids and they're so hyped up about getting to the next house. Keith Hollingshead is a member of that four-person unit who says Halloween night is a challenge with so many kids running from house to house and drivers not paying attention. All you have to do is sit at a traffic light for a few minutes and you'll see people on those phones texting. You'll see them pull off from a, from a traffic light still texting looking straight down instead of ahead. And that's what's concerning out here in these neighborhoods tonight. So keep an eye out. So it's a memorable Halloween night for all the right reasons. In Clinton, Scott Simmons, 16 WAPT News. And with all those ghosts and goblins out, we're wondering what will you see the most of this year? 16 WAPT's Alley Ware continues our team coverage with the most popular costumes in Jackson for 2016. <laughs> So we're at Halloween headquarters on Lakeland Drive checking out some of this year's top sellers. Now, always a good bet is something scary like these guys for Halloween. But this year, among some of the top sellers are comic book characters and, of course, the presidential candidates. Everybody wanted a Donald Trump mask. They were the first ones to sell out. I had twice as many Donald Trumps as I had Hillary's. And they sold out about two or three times. The Suicide Squad movie is what struck this craze. It was a red and black color. And with the Suicide Squad, this is the new color. You know, Batman versus Superman has been very good. Which one's winning so far? Uh, the Joker. I'm going to say the Joker is probably number one. Clowns have been fantastic this year. We have totally uh, revamped the clown section, put scary masks with the, the kid-friendly products, and we've uh, sold out three times now. The folks here at Halloween headquarters say that every year pop culture determines what is their most popular sellers, but... Like my pal here, most of the time, the scarier, the better. In Halloween headquarters on Lakeland Drive in Jackson, Alley Ware, 16, WAPT News. And we want to see your Halloween costumes and your trick-or-treating pictures. Just upload your photos to the U-Local section of WAPT.com. Creepy clown sightings have swept the nation. And, of course, we've had some right here in Mississippi. 16 WAPT's Ryan Houston joins us with the creepy clown fallout, Ryan. That's right, ladies. It's no laughing matter. Believe it or not, clowning is a way of life for some. And all these creepy clown sightings are affecting the people in that line of work. Now, people have reported seeing bizarre clown sightings. Get this, in more than 30 states, the clowns were carrying weapons, riding on the back of cars, and even just sort of standing in the dark. Now, we sat down with Anthony Taylor, who says those folks are making it hard for people in his line of work. There's thousands of clowns nowadays and you got men you got women you got children and a real clown is going to care about how they look and not they ain't going to show no ugly face and now that you got these lunatics running around okay. Okay, so there is actually a medical phobia for people who really are afraid of clowns, and you won't believe how many people in the U.S. could have it. We'll have much more on the creepy clown fallout tonight at 10. In the studio, Ryan Houston, 16 WAPT News. I am looking forward to it, Ryan. Okay. A police are still looking for the burglar who broke into a restaurant in Clinton. The manager of the Takara Grill and Sushi Restaurant says someone threw two rocks through the window and stole all of the money out of the register and office. When we come in here this morning, we saw the window has been broke. We see they have two rocks right there. And we saw the register was on the table, all the money gone, and office was open. Well, if you know who did this, call Crime Stoppers at 601-355-TIPS. Tomorrow is the last day for JSU President Carolyn Myers. Names of candidates to replace her are swirling. One of them, former U.S. Secretary of Education Rod Page. He is a JSU graduate and coached the football team back in the 1960s. The other names, former JSU Provost James Rennick and Elaine Hayes Anthony, who's Dean of JSU School of Journalism and Media Studies. IHL is analyzing Jackson State's finances after saying the school only had enough money in its reserve fund to operate for a week. The Jackson Public School Board will meet tomorrow to finalize the details of Dr. Cedric Gray's early departure from the district. The board announced Friday Gray would resign. Earlier this month, JPS received an F from the State Department of Education. That's down from a D last year.
Jackson police say they will not charge the driver who fatally hit a four-year-old with an SUV. It happened just before four o'clock Friday afternoon at Northwood Village Apartments on Watkins Drive. Jackson police say four-year-old Julius Jones was hit outside the apartment complex. Emergency crews rushed him to the hospital, but he died. The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries and Parks has 15 new officers. 13 men and two women graduated Thursday at Roosevelt State Park. They will officially report for duty next Monday. The State Department of Health confirms four new cases of the West Nile virus. They're in Adams, Carroll, George and Jefferson Davis counties. That brings the state total for the year to 36 with one death. There will soon be a brand new ball field for kids with disabilities. I think it's really important to me because my mom's in a wheelchair. Jason Voynick founded the Miracle League of Central Mississippi two years ago when he was just 12 years old. Today he's 14 and Voynick in the city of Ridgeland announced a huge new plan. They're turning an existing field at Wolcott Park into a special ball field just for kids with disabilities. I thought it was really a problem that we didn't have a chance for uh, children with challenges not to be able to have fun around here. The field itself will have larger dugouts that are accessible for wheelchairs. The field is completely flat. Uh, it's made of a latex-free rubberized surface so that those that are using wheelchairs or special assistance devices are able to move safely. At the cost of renovating this field, $450,000. The project should be completed by the spring. Finance reform. One judicial candidate told us he wants to change the way money is getting into campaigns. Plus, the nominees are in. See who made the cut for our Blitz 16 Player of the Week. Well, I told you we had high.